Hey guys, I recently switched over to the S20 FE to revisit this phone from over a year ago, and I've got to say, it's held up pretty well. This phone was released in September of 2022 at 699 USD, but the great thing about these old phones is that they drop in price really, really quick. You can now pick up this phone for $500 on Amazon, brand new and unlocked, or just over $400 if you're okay with the renewed phones. It's also always on discount with special promotions on carriers as well, which is great for us consumers because phones can be crazy expensive these days. Now, it all sounds great, but how does the S20 FE actually perform in 2022? The first thing you'll notice with this phone is the design. Even though it's just been over a year, this phone already looks outdated and boring with its miniature camera bump, especially with those huge cameras nowadays like the Pixel 6. But that's not to say the build quality isn't great. Although the buttons are a little bit mushy, overall the phone feels great even with its plastic back which makes the phone lighter to hold and won't crack when you drop it. Most people put their phones in cases anyways so you're not going to miss the more premium feeling of glass backs. And when using the phone, it's just the right size and the rounded edges make it really comfortable to hold. Flipping over to the front is a flat 6.5 inch 1080p panel with thin bezels and a censored hole punch for the selfie camera. As always, the displays on Samsung phones look great and this phone is no exception. There is a good level of brightness, although it is a little hard to see in bright sunlight. The colors are vibrant and it has a 120Hz refresh rate which makes the phone feel buttery smooth. To unlock the phone, you can use the face unlock or fingerprint scanner which are both pretty speedy. The fingerprint scanner is located quite low on the display so it's a little hard to reach and Samsung did swap out the regular ultrasonic fingerprint sensor for an optical one, but it's still pretty fast even with the screen protector on and definitely much better than the Pixel 6. And by the way, I will be making a video comparing both these similarly priced phones in depth so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Anyways, back to the phone, the S20 FE has dual speakers which get pretty loud and sound great for playing music, although it is a little tinny and muffled for my taste. Dolby Atmos does make watching videos and movies a great experience though, with a bigger soundstage for more immersion. But to get the phone to a lower price point, Samsung needed to cheap out on some areas, and they definitely did for the haptics. They feel a bit light and springy, but it's still usable. Now, when people consider buying older phones, they're usually most worried about the performance, so let's talk about that. The Snapdragon 865 chip in the S20 FE was a powerful chip when it came out, and it can still handle anything you throw at it with ease. Navigation around the phone feels fluid, animations are smooth, and day-to-day -day tasks like scrolling Instagram, watching TikTok, or browsing the web runs without a hitch. Heavier tasks like gaming or using the camera extensively are also a great experience. What's more impressive is One UI itself, which is Samsung's heavily customized Android skin. To be honest, I always found it to be clunky and ugly, and it's safe to say that I was never a big fan of One UI at all, but this phone actually somewhat changed my opinion. Samsung has worked really hard in the past few years to improve their software with timely and stable updates, and with the current version of One UI 4.0 on Android 12, I can gladly say that it runs beautifully stable with absolutely zero bugs, and that makes me so happy, especially coming from the Pixel 6. Good job, Samsung. The new Android 12 update actually just came in last week for me, and there's already a big difference. The animations are smoother and much more optimized for 120Hz, there are new widgets, and it just looks better overall. We get the new Material U theming across the device, a cleaner looking camera UI, and a new notification shade which I don't really like. They removed the conversations, notifications, and silent categories, so it's all jumbled up together now. The notifications are also compact now which makes it hard to see details at a glance and just looks ugly when everything around it is so spacious. On the other hand, the battery life on the Samsung S20 FE is pretty great considering it's over a year old. At 4500 mAh, the phone gets me through the day consistently with around 5-6 to six hours of screen on time depending on my usage. Of course, if I use the camera all day, game for a long time, or use the hotspot, the battery does drain faster and needs to be charged during the day. Thankfully, this phone has 25 watt fast charging which gets you to around 50% in half an hour or 15 watt wireless charging which is convenient. And if you use any type of wireless earbuds or use a smartwatch, there's even 4.5 reverse wireless charging which is handy on the go. And finally, how do the cameras hold up in 2022? Honestly, the pictures still look great even when compared to newer phones. Nowadays, cameras rely much more on software than actual hardware improvements for the camera, and this phone has actually improved a lot with software updates. The S20 FE has a triple camera setup on the back with a 12 megapixel ultra wide, 12 megapixel wide, and an 8 megapixel 3x optical zoom lens, and they all take pretty good photos. The main sensor does a great job capturing typical Samsung photos, which are detailed, colorful, and punchy. The HDR does a great job removing shadows and preventing highlights from being blown out in high contrast scenes. 
I would say the cameras hold up well, even compared to the new Pixel 6, which you will see in detail next week. The ultra-wide camera is also super wide, which can capture some dramatic looking shots. The processing is basically the same as the main sensor, but it just lacks a bit of detail, especially in low light. And lastly, having a telephoto camera is super handy for street photography or zooming into things you can't see. The camera zoom up to 30 times digitally and the results are surprisingly good. I wish the telephoto camera could be used in portrait mode for that extra compression, but unfortunately it's disabled. The selfie camera isn't bad either with a pretty wide field of view and a decent amount of detail. There's also a ton of fun modes in the camera app to play with, like single take to let the camera take different photos and videos by itself, AR doodle to draw things in the air, or even a food mode to make food look extra yummy. All right, switching over to video quality right now, I would say it's pretty decent with up to 4K60 on the front and the back. The stabilization is pretty good and vlogging is easy thanks to how wide the selfie camera is. There's also portrait video, which is similar to Apple cinematic mode and it looks shockingly good. And for those of you camera nerds, there's a pro mode for photos and videos if you want to dial in your settings manually. And that's basically it for the phone. Overall, it has good hardware, the performance is perfectly fine for anything you need, and it also has pretty versatile cameras. Samsung also has great software support, so you can be rest assured that you'll receive timely and stable updates for the future too. And for the discounted price of $499 on Amazon right now, it's definitely worth the money. You can also find great deals on Amazon Renewed for $420 or even with your local carriers. However, the S21 FE did come out recently and if you can't find any insane deals for the S20, the S20 FE is only $100 more brand new right now and it might be a good choice for better performance, cameras, and longer software support. And when the time comes to upgrade, Samsung always has amazing trade-in promotions, so the phone will be able to retain its value for sure. For example, with the new S22, let's say you trade in this S20 FE. You're getting $300 for the instant trade-in value, a $100 Samsung credit for free accessories, a free upgrade to 256GB of storage, 3 free months of Spotify Premium, and 4 free months of YouTube Premium, making the phone $499. It's even crazier if you plan on staying with a carrier. For example, with AT&T, you can trade in any phone in any condition and get a free S22. If you go on the website right now and trade in the S20 FE, you're getting an $800 trade-in credit, which is pretty insane, but obviously you'll have to be on contract with them. Speaking about the S22 series, it just came out last week and I was pretty impressed by the event. I decided to order the normal S22 to review on the channel, so tons of awesome videos are coming your way. Definitely subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on those videos. And also, feel free to leave any questions you guys may have about the phone down below in the comments, and I'll make sure to get back to you. Alright, thank you so much for watching the video, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one!